Thank you. Hola, amigas. ¿Cómo están? I know. I look like Maria Rodriguez. I get it. I get it. I get it. I'm just saying what you're thinking, so don't be confused. Obviously, by marriage, and my parents were not very creative. A hundred percent Puerto Rican. Wait, do we have any Latinas in the house? Yes. Mis amigas, ¿cómo están? Huepa. Any Boricuas? Right here. Oh, Lord, help us. All right. I see you. I see you. All right. So, you know, our people, we're everywhere. We're everywhere. So, it is so great to be here with you. Before I go on, let me show you my family so you get the whole Cindy Thomas situation. I got my people here. Let's see. I know, right? God has been good to me. Come on. Can you put your hands together for Jesus? Blessing the Puerto Rican. That is my very uh, godly, kind, generous, very easy on the eyes husband in the corner that his name is Scott. And then you see me, you will never see me that great. That's why I bring that picture because there was a lot of effort. <laughs> so that, they will nev- that will never happen again. So that's me. I, the young man that is beside me, I know you can't recognize me, but just go with me, people. Use your imagination. It's a filter. Okay. You know too, huh? So that's Caleb. That is my son. He's um, in where I come from. We called uh, the Caucasians, white people, whatever. They, you know, don't be offended. Obviously, I like y'all. I marry one of y'all. We call them gringos. Not sure where that came from, so don't ask me, but we call them gringos. I mean, I'm a Puerto Rican, so together we made a gringo Rican. <laughs> yes, thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate the love. I pre- so he's my son, and about a year and a half ago, he gave me a beautiful daughter named Liz. And she just happens to be here with me. Liz, would you stand and see all my new... And she's cute, and she's awesome, and I am crushing the mother-in-law game. (laughs) Um, That is my story, and I'm going to stick to that. (laughs) But it is such an honor to be here at Cornerstone, and I show you that picture because I want you to see that I am, you know, a mother, a wife, a daughter, a friend, a sister, just like you. And I want us together for the next few minutes just to encourage each other, to inspire each other for growth. Isn't that what we want? Isn't that what you're here on a Monday night? Yay for you. Can you give yourselves a hand for showing up here? Listen, you could be anywhere. You could be doing anything. And you made the right choice. And I get it. Not every choice. I don't know about you, but not every choice that I make is awesome. I try, but not every choice is awesome. But tonight, you made a great choice. And before we go further, we have to, I want you to do something with me. Can we stand to our feet? You're going to be sitting for a minute. It's good for your circulation. You're welcome. (laughs) I want you to stand because I have only been, I've not been in Arizona for 24 hours yet. I've just been here a few hours. I've been in this property about two hours. And I'm telling you, I am so impressed, impressed with the level of excellence of this house. I am so impressed with the leadership of this house. And I know that you know, because you, you look cute and smart, <laughs> both equally important. I know that you know how blessed you are. I know because God, you know, God is everywhere. You know what I'm saying? But the fact that you are planted, that God ordered your steps to this house and planted you in this house, in a house of excellence, that's good for you. That means excellence is being produced in you, in your family, in your marriage, in your health, in your finances. Come on, somebody. That's happy news. So I want us, out of gratitude, to put our hands together for the leadership of Cornerstone, for putting, yeah, I love it. You know, you know. And I just want to say, I am so grateful for this place, for this environment tonight, 
because you have provided a safe environment, an excellent environment. There's been so much work for all the volunteers. Thank you. We are all, I'm just new to the group, but I'm just taking charge. See how we are? <laughs> I want to say thank you for providing this place so we can all encounter Jesus and grow. So one more time, can we put our hands together for all the leadership and the volunteer team? Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You may be seated. All right, so a couple of months ago, before the holidays, at the beginning of fall, I found myself in the mall. And uh, that is my mission field. <laughs> Don't judge, they need Jesus too. <laughs> they need customers that are gonna be kind and nice and you know, say thank you and please. And the Bible says, how will, how will they hear? if a preacher is not sent. And a preacher there is, is somebody carrying the good news of Jesus. So I am a living sacrifice for Jesus. <laughs> I go to the mission field. But last year, 2019, was a difficult year for my family because at the beginning of the year, my mom was diagnosed with cancer, very serious cancer. But she's doing good right now, walking in her healing, working it out. Come on, give it up for Jesus, yes. Listen, you're going to do some work. Just think your arms are strengthening every time you clap. You know what I'm saying? Just put intention with it, and it will work out right here. All right? You're welcome. So I've been, I was so busy. I've not been, I had neglected the mission field. So I found myself in the mall, and I, was, I just needed to know, you know, what's coming, what's happening in the fall. We live in Florida. It's the same temperature all the time. We may have two days that it goes down to 70. We get the coats out and the boots out. We're sweating to death, but we are wearing our coats. <laughs> but I wanted to see what was out. So I found myself after being in the mall for a couple hours in the shoe department because shoes never disappoint. It don't matter if it's been a good, you know, season or not. If you're a little bit fluffy, bloated, it doesn't matter. Shoes are going to fit. <laughs> I needed to feel good about myself. So I went to the shoe department and I have a system to get shoes. I'm a little OCD. My family will tell you that I'm a little extra OCD, but lies. I'm just a little organized, even in my shopping. So when I walk into a shopping department, I, a shopping department, a shoe department, don't worry, people. I see some of you like with fear in your face. <laughs> let, me, let me remind you that a Latina has been placed uh, near you. If you need translation at any moment, <laughs> they will be able to help you. If you happen to be seated in a section that the Latina is busy, keep listening. <laughs> I will talk to you tonight in the present, future, and past in the same sentence at one time. <laughs> I will. But keep listening. Eventually you get, oh, now I get it. All right? So that was a commercial. So back to the shoe department. So I'm in the shoe department. I come with instructions. I was, um, I, find a, I find a focal point and I start there and I walk around because I, and you know, they have amazing, you know, salespeople that, you know, they, they're there because they got to work. You know, the babies have to eat. So I get it. So I try not to make eye contact because if you make eye contact, they come in and I don't want to be distracted. So I'm, I walk around, I start, and I walk the whole thing. And then I go again. And at the second time, then if I still like it when I first saw it, you know what I'm saying? The boot, the shoe, then I pick it up. I look at the price first. Because once I know how much it costs, then I'll tell you how much I like it. <laughs> so I, I, and it's not about saving, it's about getting more. So um, I get the... The shoes, so I gather a few, and then I see the, the salesman that is like anxiously awaiting. You know, I feel like I'm Bambi and he's like a hunter, you know what I mean? <laughs> and I'm like trying to hide. So I tell him, I give him the shoes, give me, you know, my size, and, and he goes and gets it, and he's looking at me. I said, listen, I'm not playing with you. You're gonna make some money today. <laughs> I'm not playing with you, because there might be a few that I asked for. The number is irrelevant, don't judge me. So I, he brings the shoes and I try them on because you like them, but you don't know, are they comfortable? Are they not comfortable? I like cute shoes, but they have to be comfortable. You know what I'm saying? 
There's nothing worse than seeing somebody walking in very uncomfortable shoes because they think that we don't notice. We all notice. <laughs> we know. We know. Be free. Be free in Jesus' name. So, I am trying the shoes and, and, I, and I see him and he's, because I'm discarding, yeah, no, all too pointy, too round. Oh, no. Oh, this leather don't give. No, all of that. So, I end with two shoes in front of me. They both happen to be boots. They both happen to be black boots. One was a flat, one was a high heel. So I'm putting back my tennis shoes on because I had my like, gear on, my shopping gear. You know what I mean? Wait. Tennis shoes, leggings, easy off, easy on. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Listen, you already, you should be taking notes already. <laughs> that is good stuff. So I, um, the guy is looking at me and he starts to make a plea for each boot. Like he's trying to help me, sweet man. He wants to make some money. So he's like, what is it gonna be? Is it gonna be like the flat one? And he's giving arguments why I should buy the flat boot. And he then gives me argument of why I should buy the high heels. Elegant, but this one, day to day. And, and I'm going, dude, do you not know that I am a woman of God? Do you not know that I am a woman of faith? And I walk in the abundance of God. Now, this conversation is happening in my head. Because I'm not weird. I'm extra, but I'm not weird. So I look at him and I smile and he goes, so which is it going to be? Is it, is it going to be this one or this one? And I get up, I grab my purse and I look at him and I said, oh, sir, that's not what we're doing today. Today, we're going to do this and that. And he, you would have thought he was Pentecostal. He was like shouting all over the place. Again, don't be offended. I'm a recovering Pentecostal, so it's all good. All good. My people will be good. They know. So I got home and Scott said, you find anything? I said, of course I did. And I showed him, he goes, you bought two boots, two black boots? And I said, yes. You know, we walk in godly principles in this house. It's not about this or that. It's about this and that. Can you say that with me? This and that. You got to put an emphasis in the end. This and that. And that is a biblical principle. And I see some of you are looking at me like, okay, girl, now you're stretching. No, let me give you a Bible. Bible says in John 3:16 that God sent his son Jesus to die for us. So for whoever believes in him shall not perish and have everlasting life, that he will have eternal life. Isn't that what John 3, 16 says? But the Bible also says in John 10, 10, that Jesus came to give us life and life more abundantly. Is that not true? So it's not just about eternal life. It's about life here and abundant life here on earth, right? So it's this and that. It's not just to have some pie in the sky. It's to get some ham where I am. <laughs> it's both. It's this and that. What about the Bible also says in John 4, 24, that God is seeking a people, that he wants us to mature to a place that we worship him in spirit and in truth. We need both. We need the spirit of God marinating the word of God. You know what I mean? Because too much spirit, no word, then you don't have the stability of the word. So you get a little flaky. If you have too much word without the spirit marinating it and applying it into your life, we can become a little legalistic. So the Bible says you have to have spirit and truth. God, Jesus, God sends Jesus to redeem us and restores us. Jesus doesn't leave us just redeemed, which is awesome. But if you are redeemed, now you stay in your mess. Redeemed, but with all the mess. But God takes us, he redeems us, and then he restores us. It's redemption and restoration. We don't have to choose. Is this? We are here because we want to learn more on how to honor God and love people. As believers, as Christ followers, it's not just about loving God. That's how we start. We got to love God and discover his love for us. But once we get that, we got to love people. So it's not just it's honoring God and loving people. So again, 
It is about this and that. Now, you married ladies, when you go home, don't be telling your husband that the Puerto Rican lady that came from Florida told you to go buy a bunch of shoes. <laughs> You're gonna have to work out with the man of the house. That's what I'm saying. I will give you tips afterwards if you need some. All right. So I wanted, to talk, I wanted to talk to you guys about this concept, about this and that, because I think that it is a concept that will set us free here as we continue to walk this Christian life. I'm going to talk to you about um, the story of Deborah and Jael. And it's a story that is found in the book of Judges, Judges chapter 4. And it is, if, I don't know if you're familiar with this story or it might, maybe it's been a long time since you read it. This is a great story. If you haven't read it, you need to go home and reread it. Because you can't just read the Bible. You got to read the Bible. There's some good stuff in there. So this story, I could read it to you because it's only one chapter. But with my accent and my dyslexia, we will be here all night. So we're not going to do that. So I'm going to paraphrase you and paraphrase it and tell you the story. Um, when we get to the story... In Judges 4, the children of Israel, we find the children of Israel, they have been in bondage to their enemy, the Canaanites. For over 20 years, they've been in bondage. But God has sent Deborah as a deliverer. We use the word in English, judges. But it's a, a better translation from the, for the Hebrew word it will be like deliverer. So don't think Judge Judy. Nothing wrong with Judge Judy. But that's not what Deborah was, you know, like mm, with a gavel. No, 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 no. She, was, she will hear from God. This is before Jesus. She will hear from God and then she will deliver the word of God and the instruction of God to the people. That was like, for example, there was 13 judges that got appointed to the children of Israel. Like Samson was one of those deliverers. Remember Samson? We remember Samson because we all like, mm -hmm, that's a Delilah. Don't you come over here, girl. <laughs> I have a friend of mine, her husband, like she shaved he said, you know, he's going with a bald look. He looks very good. Um, and she's like, yeah, you know, I, I smell it, Delilah. I'm going to do it before she gets the chance. <laughs> so it was a little drastic, though. Believe Jesus that he will be a fence. So um, we find that Deborah in this story, she gets a word from God, and God tells her to go and get Barack, not Barack Obama. This is a long time ago. <laughs> said, go get Barack. He was the general of the, uh, of the Israeli army, of the children of Israel. They had an army. They weren't under bondage, but they had a big army. So Barak was like the general, like the top dog for the children of Israel. So God said to Deborah, go get Barak, the general, and tell him to gather the armies and to go into battle because today I'm going to give him victory over the Canaanites. Now that sounds great. But these people had been in bondage for 20 years. You know they had tried that before. They had tried to go into battle and got a whooping. But this day, she goes and she tells Barak. And Barak was excited. And he goes, okay, let's go. And she goes, no, you didn't hear me. I said, typical men, it's a global issue, people, <laughs> since the beginning of time. Deborah said, no, God said for you to gather the armies and to go into battle. And he says, yeah, I'm not going without you. Because Barak probably, like many of us sometimes, we think that somebody else can, is going to carry the presence of God. And how many of you are thankful that the presence of God is in me? You have the presence of God, and you have the presence of God, and you have the presence of God. I feel like Oprah. And you have the presence of God. <laughs> we all have the presence of God. But Deborah was a woman of authority, but she was under authority. Come on, somebody. So she went to battle because that's what... The general wanted. So they went to battle and they were going against the general for the Canaanites, the enemy. And his name is Cicero. I call him Big Ugly. <laughs> and he had a reputation. He was cruel. He had intimidated and manipulated. He had oppressed the children of Israel for over 20 years. So they go. And on this particular day, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He was faithful and true to his word. And they, the children of Israel, kicked some Canaanite butt. Can I say butt? Booty? Booty? Hiney? Backside? They got a whooping, the Canaanites. So the children of Israel were winning the battle, and the big, ugly, mean, and intimidating, 
He ran like a coward, ran through the desert and found himself in front of Jael's tent. Jael, why was he living in a tent? Like camping? No, Jael was a Bedouin. And those, that's a group of people that live in Israel. They're still there till today. That they don't have permanent housing. They go wherever the work is. And they live in tents intentionally. So they, they live for a minute in a place and then they pick up the tents and then they move again. So Jael was just a young mom, you know, and she had a tent because that is her tent. The Bible says, you can't read the Bible. You got to read the Bible. The Bible said that was Jael's tent. Why was that Jael's tent? Why is it not like the family tent? No, that was Jael's tent because in that day, in that custom for those people, the man had several wives. They were not Puerto Rican. <laughs> they will be extinct. And they still... They're still around. They're still around. But now when you go to Israel, they have a satellite dish and a Mercedes Benz parked in front of their tent. Um, so she had her own tent because the husband had many wives. So every wife had her own tent for her and her children. So it was her responsibility to put the tent up and pick up the tent and move it around. And then he will go from tent to tent to the different wives, you know. Whatever, you, you got an imagination. We're not gonna go into it. I got to go with this story. So Barack found, uh, not Barack, but Cicero, Big Ugly, found himself in front of JL because he was running from the battle, running like a coward. Isn't that what the enemy does? Always oh, just a, a, lot, a lot of this, a lot of this and nothing, no power, no real power. So JL invites him into her tent. Now remind, remember, this man had been around for a minute. He had a reputation. She knew who he was. She invited him into her tent. He asked for water. She gave him warm milk. She gave him a blanket and waited until he fell asleep. And when he fell asleep, she took one of her tent pegs and she took a hammer and she walked over and she put the tent on his temple and nailed him to the floor, killing him. I know that is in your Bible. HBO, what? Girl, get in the Bible. <laughs> All kinds of stuff in there. The Bible says that she killed him. And as the result of her, of, of her doing, the children of Israel had total victory on that day because of what she did. Now, this is a very interesting story. And of course, there's two main characters here, Deborah and Jael. And I want to talk to you in the next few minutes about, about all of us. We have a Deborah and a JL inside of us. We do, we have a Deborah and we have a JL. We have an influencer, that's what Deborah, Deborah had influence. And we have a warrior, that's what JL was. And I want I, I came all the way from Florida to try to wake up and the, the warrior and the influence on the inside of you. And if, he, if they're already awake, I want you to, to get going and I want you to embrace them. Because although these two personalities, or these two characters are totally different, they're totally essential for a walk with Christ. When I say influencer, I'm not talking about uh, Instagram, swipe up. I'm not hating on the swipe up influencers. Please continue to do your videos and show us how to do all of this and how to curl our hair and give us your code so we can get the discount. I am not talking about that. I am a talking, I'm talking about an influence that will allow us to, to achieve the purpose that God created us for. Because we know that, right? We know that. We know that there's a purpose for each and every one of us. There is a specific assignment that will not get done unless you do it. That's why you were created. There's a purpose for all of us. That's the kind of godly influence that I'm talking about. We need to be hungry for that influence. But we cannot allow the world to the, or culture to, to tell us what influence is because, again, influence, the world and culture will tell you that influence is to be popular. And there's nothing wrong with popularity other than it's just popularity means when people like you and people change their minds all the time. So they like you today, they won't like you tomorrow. 
So we cannot be driven by popularity because then we will be changing all the time, changing all the time. Some of us have done it already. And I'm going to be this and I'm going to be that. And I'm spicy. I'm not sweet. I'm not mean. Please come talk to me afterwards. I'm not mean. I'm just spicy, spicy. I tried myself. I tried to become a sweet person. It is not in my nature. Do you know what happens when you take something sweet in the kitchen? I don't know, but a friend of mine told me. Because I don't cook. Don't judge me. It's not important. When you take something spicy and you try to make it sweet, it becomes bitter. So if you're spicy, embrace your spiciness. Don't be mean. Measure yourself. Not everybody can handle all of this at one time. You know, tablespoon, teaspoons. Un ching ching. Embrace it. But we need influence. We need influence to accomplish what God wants. So don't try to go by what culture in the world says because you'll be changing. We can't be changing. We have to be who we are. Because if you're changing, then your purpose will match you. So I'm not talking about popularity. I'm talking about godly influence. And we all have a circle of influence that we want to be successful with. When I was a young mom, my child became to know Jesus Christ because of my influence in his life. So I don't care what season of your life is, you need to have a desire to be successful with your circle of influence. But let me tell you what success is. Success is to find ourselves in the middle of God's will for our life. Success is not to find ourselves in the middle of, God's, uh, of men's attention. You see, we think success is when, when, when people, when we have people's attention and people notice us. That could be, it could not be. So we cannot be led by that. We need to be here where success is being in the middle of God's will. And if people give you attention, then there's a purpose for that attention because God's influence comes to us to make us effective, not famous. Nothing wrong with being famous, but the purpose is to be effective. Effective for your purpose that you've been put here. In this. I don't want you to just be sucking air, waiting for the appointed day when you go in the by and by, get you some pie. I want you to be effective here. So if we were to ask Deborah, how do I, bec- how do I get that influence? Deborah will say three things real quick. She will say, girls, spend time with God. Spend time with God. And she will say that to me and I will be now dead. Come over here. Come over here. Now between you and me, give me the juice. Tell me the real, give me the deep stuff. You know, of course, spending time with God. Okay, that's given. But is it? Is it? Do we do it? Listen, I have been challenged in my life. I do a lot of godly things. I'm, I work in the church. I'm always, just because I'm working in the church don't mean I'm spending time with God. I work with my husband. I live with my husband and we still find the need to have a date night because when we are on, on, on a date, I'm doing nothing but focusing on him. Isn't it funny that we are so eager to have those dates with, with our girls? We need a girl's night. We see each other all the time. We work together, but we need a girl's night so we can catch up. We, you need a God night so you can catch up with Jesus. Spending time with God. You know where Deborah was found? She was found in the temple serving. Then she became a deliverer. But before she was a deliverer, she was in the temple, in the back, doing the, the wicks for the, for the candles, for the temple. You want influence? Get in the house. Start serving. Get into a Bible study. Sign up for Propel. Go on the retreat. But really, do that because that will motivate you to spend more time with God. Listen, you get around godly people, you start doing godly things. It's not easy. Every time you go pray, everything, all hell breaks loose. Everybody want to talk to you when you go pray. Take five minutes. I'm not saying take two hours, take a whole day off. No, but just take some time. Not when you're driving, which is awesome that we can pray doing the dishes and driving, but take some, okay, Jesus, this is your time. Nothing else but you and I. Influence, you, influence will grow. Your pursuit of God will give momentum to your life. 
I think Deborah would say, be faithful in the mundane. Be faithful on the day to day. We get so busy about the big stuff. We're waiting for the ta-da moment where we will walk into the stage of our lives and take center stage. You know, that doesn't happen. There's no big step. There's no code. It doesn't happen. It's every day. Every day. Anybody that you see that is successful is an accumulation of a lot of days. The Bible says that success comes to us little by little. So we have to be faithful in the mundane, in our daily routine. We have to find the balance between expectations and contentment. Because we're always looking for the next season. And God is going to do great things. And one day I'm going to do that. And that is awesome. And we need to have those expectations. We need to plan for the future. But sometimes we're so much invested in the future that we are not celebrating today the season that you are in. Where is your circle of influence today? What are the, who are the people that God has surrounded you with today? I know tomorrow you're going to be over there, girl, with all them people. But today, where are you? Today, make sure you have influence with those people. Be faithful with those people. If we believe that, that influence comes from God and that promotion comes from God, then we will be faithful with the people that we find right here. And we won't be like looking over there and ignoring the people here. When we ignore the people here looking for over there, that means that we think that those people, those are the people that are going to promote me. Those are the people that are going to give you influence. Let me tell you something. This is the only thing that is true. And this says that promotion comes from the Lord. So I am here to set you free from those people over there. Focus right here, right here. Get your influence going. If we're faithful to God, you will be faithful to your family. If you're faithful to God, you will be faithful to your job and you will get that promotion and that raise that you want. We will be dependable people. We will be trustworthy people. Let's be faithful. The Bible says to not grow weary in well-doing. We have to stay faithful. We can't get tired of living the right way the Christ way, the Jesus way. We have to stay at it day in and day out. Start new every day. And I think that Deborah will also say, the only thing that fuels influence is humility. Humility. Deborah didn't go to the battle with a selfie stick. Hey, hashtag prophesied. <laughs> she didn't. She didn't. She even, the Bible says, you got to read the Bible. She says, the honor, if I go to battle, she told Barak, the general, if I go to battle with you, the honor of this battle is going to go to a woman. And when you start reading the story, you go, yeah, you go, Deborah, you tell him. But that's not what she's doing. That's not what she's doing because the, the honor of the battle went to the girl that was on the side of the mountain in the desert. Nobody knew who she was. That's the only time we find her name in the Bible. That's all. She did, but what, what a thing she did. She defeated an enemy that the biggest armies had not been able to defeat for over 20 years. That is the kind of influence, humility. You want influence? You have to walk in humility. When we walk in humility, God will trust you and men will trust you. You want influence? Walk in humility. As Christ followers, there's no option. We, this is, that is the goal. That is what Deborah will tell us. But I told you, it's not just about this and that. It, it, it's not this or that. It's this and that. So before I move on, I want to tell you something. Influence is about to come knocking at your door. God brought me here because influence is going to come knocking at your door. So I'm going to declare to you that as you pursue God, God will up your influence. As you stay faithful with God, he will up your resources so you are able to accomplish everything that is in your heart to do. As you, as you grow in humility, God is going to up your favor. Because it is time, girls, that we up our voice, that we up our influence, that we up our opportunities for the kingdom of God. Because when we happens for us, we are part of the kingdom. What happens to us affects the kingdom. Isn't that great about God? God is not giving you a job. God is trying to bless you and your family and your circle. And when your family is blessed, then we will all be blessed. So do you receive that influence? So let's get ready. It's coming. I'm telling you, it's up to you 
It is your choice. Do you take the boot or not? Do you take the influence or not? But it's not just about influence. It's about being a warrior. And let me, again, let's not let culture or the world define what a warrior is because they are trying to define it for us. And they will send us into battles, fighting people of the opposite race. And you don't believe what I believe. And you don't worship like I worship. I mean, it's everywhere. That's not what a warrior is. That's why we cannot allow culture to define it. The Bible says in Ephesians 6, this war, this wrestling match, this fight that we are having and that we will have is not with a human opponent. It is with the powers of darkness that control the evil heavenly world. So this is a spiritual battle. This is a battle against pride and bitterness, and unforgiveness, and racism. It is not a fight against person. So when I tell you to be a warrior, I don't want you to go out here like, what, what, what? You looking at me? You want some of this? No, that's not what I'm... You'll be like, what, what? Say something. That's not what I'm saying. Don't give me a bad reputation. I want to be able to come back to Arizona. We have to prepare. The thing about a warrior, though, you can't wait until the fight starts to start training to become a warrior. My husband says, when you say something harsh, smile. I always forget. (laughs) For all the times that I forgot so far. (laughs) But we can't wait until the enemy comes into our tent. Have you ever had an enemy come into your tent? I'm not talking a physical tent, but into that private place, into your intimate place, where that place where into that intimate place of your heart or that private place in your mind. Have you ever had an enemy come in and try to invade your personal space? At that moment, you can't start going, okay, what do I do? What do I do? We have to be ready, girls. The Bible says prepare because troubled times are going to come. But don't fear and don't don't stress out because I will be with you. If God is good, we need to know that before because we might freak out and jump out of the wrong window where God was going. I was opening the door for you. Where are you going? (laughs) That's what we do, isn't it? Is it just me? Does it happen only in Florida? Okay, I didn't think so. But I think that we need to prepare and quickly, very simple, I will tell you that Jael will say to us, learn to fight in private. Learn to fight in private. I don't know if you are like me, but I am very brave in a group setting. What? Yeah, I talk a lot of smack. What? Bring it. I've always been that way. I don't know. It's a thing. But if it's on my own, I don't like the darkness. I will sleep with the light on. Don't judge me. <laughs> you know, I'm not, so, I'm not so strong. In church, you know, if I'm going through something, I'm in church, yes, and I'm declaring this in Jesus' name. But when I'm going through something in my private place at home, I'm like, Jesus, 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 Jesus. It's like I forget everything. And I feel like the Spirit of the Lord is saying sweetly to me, girl, I, I got this. You just sang that like two hours ago. You just declare this. Listen, we need to learn to fight in private. Not alone, but in private. You're never alone. The Spirit of God is always with you. And and listen, He always wins. He never loses. We need to learn to encourage ourselves. We need to speak the Word over us. And all of us here, we're sisters and friends, and we are probably so good about encouraging everybody else. But do you encourage yourself? This is something that I've been working on. Because I am, I am not, on a day-to-day, I'm not a great friend. I suck. Can I say that here? I just did. Don't be offended. I'm Puerto Rican. That's my excuse card. I, but in crisis, I rise. You have a crisis, I'm the kind of friend you want. Because I, I mean, I, it's just some, I rise. And I'm great. But for me, I had to learn to encourage myself. And I made fun of my husband because he does this, and I started doing it. He leaves himself voicemails. Oh, no, he calls himself 
Scott, you are doing a great job. You are leading this church strong. You are developing leaders. You are in the middle of God's will, and you're going to do this. And Oh, no, he does this. Soon. No, I'm not kidding. He, he's been doing this for years. And I made fun of him. He's like, that is so cheesy. I have embraced the cheese, people. Because we have to do that for ourselves. Because you, listen, the enemy is going to try to come in your tent, and you and I need to be prepared. I believe that Jael will also say, fight with what you got. Jael didn't go over there and say, okay, I can't do nothing because I don't have a sword. If I had a sword like them, then I could do it. No. And isn't that what we do with our gifts and talents? This is just, this was probably just on the, on the ground. It's a tent. It's a, tent. it's a peg for her tent. You know how many times she set up and break down? You know how many times she had to reinforce the tent? If you've been to the Middle East, you know, the winds, and she was in the desert, you know, just in the movies. <laughs> Use your imagination. She had a hammer. This is, this is what she used on a daily. What are your gifts and your talents? We get so complacent, and we take them for granted. God is not going to one day give you, like, this incredible power. No, God is, he's, whatever you need, you already have. We just have to develop it. We just have to get good at it. Jael knew exactly how much force she needed to use to get that tank through that skull. You know how she knew that? Because in the desert, there's rocky places. So she went to some rocky places. Have you ever been to a rocky place in your life that it was not as smooth as you wanted it? It's good because it will train you. It will teach you where, where, are you, where do you need to hit that speck? How much force do you have to use? She knows what it is where there's too much sand and then it's, it's you put it, and then it slides out, and then it's like going down. I've never been camping, so I don't have the vocabulary. Just go with me, people. <laughs> it slides out. You know what I'm saying? The movies, again, it slides down. So she knew that she probably needed to do it on this angle. On a day-to-day -day for years, she did this. And this is, use what is in your hand. Don't go comparing whatever weapons your sister has. If I had that weapon, I would not have this enemy. If I have this weapon, I would not be fighting this. No, use what is in your hand. And the last thing I think Jay always said, don't quit. Because she could not. She knew. Once she picked this up, she was committed. What do you think that general that was mean and had a reputation for being cruel, would have done to her if she would have been like. <laughs> that man would have woken up and she would no longer be. You know, no, don't quit. We fight till the end. You know why? Because the word of God says that we have the victory. We win. Why will you forfeit a fight that you have already won? Why won't you take the prize? We can't quit. I want you to stand to your feet. I know the musicians are coming. They should. Are they there? Look at that. That was so coordinated. So good. Let me tell you something. I'm a realist. I'm not a pessimist. I, you know, when you follow Christ, you have to believe in the good news, right? But I know that that is going to rain. The Bible says it's going to rain on the just and the unjust. I know that trouble is going to come. The storms are going to come. But we are not to be afraid. I know what it is to be in a storm. That I show you the picture of my son. He's so handsome. He has multiple personalities. <laughs> he's an athlete. He's a musician. He's smart. He's cheesy like his father. He's sweet. He's loving. He's super intense and extra. But he's not my only child. I have a son and a daughter in heaven. I know what it is to want children and to birth children and for the children not to make it. I know what, and I prayed. It's, don't tell me it was good. I didn't have faith. I will fight you. <laughs> I know what it is. And you know what? I don't like it. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't like the outcome. I prayed. And I prayed, and I believed, I believed. I mean, I, and I was in the hospital with both of them for six months because I believe, so I ain't taking no, no, you cannot do, no, this baby. I believe that when they come out, they're not compatible with life. Your daughter has no lungs. I believe, because I knew that God could. Now, I don't know why he didn't. 
I'm a little salty. I'm not mad. I'm not bitter. I have an appointment with Jesus, God, and the Holy Spirit when I get to heaven for about five years because I got a long list. And I think he agreed to the meeting to the meeting because once I get there, all things will be revealed and I will not be salty no more. I'll be like, okay, can we just cancel the meeting? I need to get back to the party because I get it. You know what I'm saying? God can handle it. But I know what it is for the enemy to come into my tent because when my son was eight, the only one that I have left, a doctor looked at my husband and I and said, you're going to need to put your son in a um, heart transplant list. After many tests, we didn't know what was happening and he's, the left side of his heart was failing. And that's when I realized, and, and listen, I had come out from a depression and I... And you thought that that would have like sent me over, but it didn't. It woke up the warrior in me. Now I've been through storms before and I've had storms since then. And I know they're still going to come. I'm okay. Bring it. I'm ready for you. I got you because he's got me. He's got me. He has you. But I'm telling you, I got a revelation the enemy doesn't come to play. He comes into your tent and he comes for your yes. He comes for your belief system. That's why he's coming. He's not coming to play. He's coming to get the word of God that is on the inside of you. Because if he gets the word of God from you, then that's it. He don't have to do nothing else. But if you and I fight for our belief system, then we know it doesn't matter that my babies are in heaven and that I didn't get to raise to because all things are going to work out for my good. That's what the Bible says. Because in my belief system tells me that God is going to give me a peace that passes all understanding. And He's going to give me a joy that is going to be such a strength in my life. That's what the Bible says. That you are going to look at me and you're going to say, there is no way she went through that. Yes, I did. You can't see the scar because he has healed me. He has restored me so great. You can't even see the cracks. And he wants to do the same for you. So as you bow your head, I'm going to pray over you. And I'm going to be intentional. And I know that, that some of you are going through a, a private fight. And the enemy is in your tent. And I know that you feel alone. But greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world that is coming after you. You have the presence of God inside of you. I know that, you, that, that He's ugly and He's intimidating, but God, if God goes before you and if God is with you, who and what can be against you? I know the weapon is formed in front of you. I know you can see it, but the Bible says it will not prosper. A thousand of those weapons will fall at your right hand and 10,000 on your left. And not, it will not touch you because you have a godly influence and you're walking as a warrior, guarding the belief system on the inside of you. So Father, tonight, I pray for my sisters and I thank you for your word. Father, you make it simple and easy to understand that you want to bless us, that you have already equipped us. Father, I pray that tonight we make a decision to continue to pursue you to grow in influence with the people that you have surrounded us with. Father, we want everything that you have for us. We want every blessing. But Father, we want it in the right time. So Father, we're just going to pursue you. And as we pursue you, you will give us the rest of the stuff. Father, and tonight, we commit ourselves to train that warrior on the inside of us. We're not going to fight people, but we're going to fight for your word that is inside of us. We will fight to believe that you are who you say you are, that you died for us to give us eternal life and an abundant, glorious life here on earth. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. <laughs>